Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Tom Talk Stuff. I'm Glee Man Tom, and since this very morning I completed the Philosopher's Stone on Audible, well, technically the Sorcerer's Stone, because I don't have access to the British versions as much as I want them. I mean, Jim Dale is absolutely amazing, and if you have not listened to the Harry Potter audiobooks and have only read them, I strongly recommend you check out the audiobooks, because listening to Jim Dale read these to you is absolutely phenomenal. So I watched the first movie about a week ago, and like I said, I completed the audiobook this morning, so I'm going to take the Philosopher's Stone quiz on Pottermore. So this is going to actually be really exciting and a lot of fun. Let's see how well I do, or more likely how poorly I do. I'm not the best test taker, but we're going to guess, I guess we're going to see, aren't we? If I can at least, you know, get out my words properly, I think it'll go a little better. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's jump in. All right. The Ultimate Philosopher's Stone Quiz by Pottermore. This is going to be exciting. There's 20 questions. Let's see how well I do. What is the name of the first chapter of Philosopher's Stone? You know what? This might actually be easier if I had read the book this time instead of listened to it. The number four Privet Drive. No, I know it starts with number four Privet Drive, but that is totally not it. Cupboard Under the Stairs, no, that's where he lives, but not the name of the chapter. The Worst Birthday, that is either the chapter of the Sorcerer of the Chamber of Secrets, the first chapter, or that's the chapter of the second, that's the second chapter of the Philosopher's Stone. Again, if I could just learn to talk properly, no. Oh. So, uh, The Worst Birthday, like I said, it's either the first chapter of The Chamber of Secrets or it's the second chapter, but I think that's called The Reptile Room. So I'm going to go with The Boy Who Lived, because that just seems like the most correct answer, you know what I mean? And I'm correct! Woohoo! It wasn't very hard, but you know. I don't, I'm getting a false sense of security here. Alright, I got the first one done. Where does Mr. Dursley work? Smeltings? No, Smeltings is the name of the private school that he attended and that they're sending Dudley to. The one with the, the big bowler hat, the, uh, the straw bowler hat, and the, uh, the, the orange knickerbockers. <laughs> uh, so not Smeltings, not Drillings, because that is where, you know, that's what they produce is drills. Tattings? Where the hell did Tattings come from? No, it's definitely Grunnings. No question about it. Yeah! I got it right again. When is this winning streak going to land? I know it's going to end soon. Which need does Albus Dumbledore reveal? He has a map of the London Underground. How, I wonder how often Dumbledore would be in the London Underground. It's kind of a weird thing to have a map of on your leg, isn't it? Uh, I'm going to go with left. It just feels that way, you know? Yes! I got it. I got it. I'm just waiting for me to get a question wrong. Who is the first Weasley that Harry ever speaks to? Ginny? No, but Ginny's super excited when she sees him. George? No, I'm pretty sure he watches Percy and the twins go through. It's not Ron either. He doesn't talk to Ron face to face until they're on their train compartment in the Hogwarts Express. It is Mrs. Weasley as he asks how to get on to the platform. You gotta admit, it was kind of lucky he heard her saying, Packed with muggles, of course. Very lucky. Very lucky. Yeah. Next. What colors does Ron try to turn scabbers? Well, that's also an easy one. I wonder where my... Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I can't find it. <laughs> what color does Ron try to turn scabbers? Yellow, it's like sunshine daisies butter mellow. Turn this stupid fat rat yellow. It doesn't work for him. Too bad, Ron. Too bad. Got another one right. <sighs> Feeling lucky. Feeling really lucky. I, I just know I'm waiting for it to turn. I'm waiting for it. Which protective measure did Professor Flitwick contribute 
for the Philosopher's Stone. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing they're talking about the protection for the stone that Harry, Ron, and Hermione have to get through at the end of the book. So the question, the, uh, the possible answers are Devil's Snare, which is definitely not right because that would obviously be brought forth by the herbology teacher, Professor Sprout. Paramina Sprout? Something like that. Let me know if I was right in the comments. Paramina? Parowina? It's something like that, isn't it? The Mirror of Erised, that's Dumbledore. The Fluffy, that's Hagrid. The Flying Keys, charming the keys and sending them flying around. That totally seems like a charm to me. So let's see. Hooray! I won again. All right. Which of the following is a compulsory textbook for first-year students at Hogwarts? Advanced potion wit making, magical drafts and potions, Hogwarts, a history, and most potent potions. Now, all of these are familiar to me. I believe advanced potion making is in the Half-Blood Prince when you get to N-E-W-T level, and Harry ends up with a raggedy one that turns out to be a miracle. Magical drafts and potions does seem more correct. Yes. Hogwarts, a history, is not recommended, but should be. I mean, imagine, see all the stuff Hermione knows that no one else does? Yeah, Hogwarts, a history, totally should be on the curriculum. And most potent potions. But I don't believe most potent potions is the correct answer either. I believe that might be a, a spell, a, I mean, a spell, a book Hermione checks out in Chamber of Secrets while trying to make the uh, polyjuice potion. I think it's from the restricted section, but I might be wrong. I'm not on the source the Chamber of Secrets yet. Again, learn to talk correctly. I'll get it one of these days. I think it's magical drafts and potions. I really do. Yes! All right. Whew. My winning streak's going to lose here at some point. I know it. Whose impatience with learning when Guardium Leviosa resulted in their feather catching fire? I think this is honestly, I'm not even going to read through him, it's Seamus Finnegan. And I think this is where in the movie he's constantly blowing, blowing things up. Because it's just like a running joke in the movie, but it wasn't really a thing in the book. Like, the only really thing you see him doing it to is the feather. So yeah. Uh, I would have almost thought it was Neville, but again, just finished the book. Sweet. Select all that apply. Which of the following students do we see sorted into their houses? Vincent Crabb. I don't know if we see him sorted. I think we just hear about it. Terry Boot. Yes, I'm sure Terry Boot. Susan Bones. Blaze Sabini. Oh. oh. Is Seamus Finnegan sorted in front of them? You know what? I'm going to go with it. I'm going to go with it. I feel like Seamus was one that it said that it took a while to decide if he was going to be in Gryffindor. So I'm going to go with that. I know they. I, I know the Hatter also did that to Neville, but Neville's not an option. And I think Vincent Crabbe was skipped over and just a Slytherin. And I think Cho Chang was not in his year. She was a year ahead of him, wasn't she? Okay. Okay, this is where it might end. Oh my god, I actually got it correctly! Holy crap! Okay, victory for me. Wow, this is awesome. Okay, <laughs> I did not expect this. Next. All right, I'm not a good test taker. This is just really making me happy. After Quirrell is defeated, which of the following questions will Dumbledore not answer for Harry? Why would Voldemort want to kill him? How did Harry get the stone out of the mirror? Did Snape hate Harry's father? And why couldn't Quirrell touch him? Well, the only one of those he did not answer is why would Voldemort try to kill him? Because it was that whole thing of, Ah, oh, the very first question you ask, I cannot answer. I know you hate to hate, hate to hear this, Harry, but when you are older, you will know. You know? Which is still kind of a blunder on Dumbledore's part. But again, at 11, he doesn't really need to know. Oh, he might have been 12 here, right? Nope, nope, he doesn't turn 12 until... Uh, July. I know how that is, because my birthday is also in July. Boom! Why would Voldemort want to kill him? Correct! I am doing almost as well as Hermione on tests. Oh my god, this is cannot stay happening. Oh, see? 
How many staircases are at Hogwarts? This cannot be one I get right. Okay. <laughs> so I immediately want to say it's big, but I don't want to think it's that big. Um, 298? Oh, still seems very big, but I mean, it's a huge castle. I mean, look at them. They're standing up here on a roof in this picture, and there's just so much room for them to be there. But again, that bot probably is where they uh, they study astrology. So, oh, 189 or 142. Uh, I'm going to cheat, but not like really. I'm not going to cheat, but I, I kind of am. I'm going to take a coin, and I'm going to flip it. <laughs> 189 for heads, 142 for tails. And it flipped over in my hand. It was just... I picked it up with my palm, and it sucked in my palm and flipped over. Okay, it's tails. 142, right? Let's say... Let's say... Magical coin! Magical coin! Mwah! All right. All right. <laughs> Next. Complete the sentence. Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of number four, Privet Drive, were... Least to say they were absolutely regular. Thank you very much. Least to say... Hmm. Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of Number 4 Privet Drive were perfectly normal and highly proud to be so. Now, that is a statement, but I don't think what they would say. Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of Number 4 Privet Drive were proud to say they were perfectly normal. Thank you very much. That is absolutely it, but the last one looks hilarious. Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of Privet Drive of number four, Privet Drive, were hiding their nephew in a cupboard under the stairs, which was perfectly normal. Thank you very much. You know, for a family that seemed to be really big into how others saw them, it's kind of weird that they never thought mistreating Harry would look badly upon them. I've always thought that was odd. So they were proud to say they were perfectly normal. Thank you very much. All right, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked that I'm still in this without a single wrong question. Something has to go wrong soon. I probably would have lost that earlier question if not for the magical coin. Yes. All right. What does Uncle Vernon learn from a postcard he receives from Aunt Marge? She was enjoying a holiday in Mallorca. I believe I heard that before. She'd broken her leg... She was ill from eating a funny whelk, and her bulldog ripper had an upset stomach. I swear I've heard all of these before, every single one of them. But I'm going to go with she was ill from eating a funny whelk because that just seems the most. But I swear it was she was ill from eating a funny whelk in Miorca. So I mean, I mean, it seems like all of these should go with it. But um, so. If she got sick in Mallorca, maybe she wasn't enjoying her holiday. So let's go here. Let's go. Oh my God! Thank you, thank you. I got it right. Uh, Fourteen out of twenty. We're almost there. Six more questions. Harry and Ron managed to get on Filch's bad side on their very first morning. What had they done? Trodden mud across his newly cleaned floors? That would get it. Poor Filch has to wash that by hand, which is weird because, like, anybody at all could cast a spell and fix that. I still think it's weird. I'm still looking for my fake faux wand. I had this branch I cut off out of the yard to use as a gesture with for some videos I was planning, and I don't see it anywhere. The pixies must have stolen it. How did they know? Huh. Insulted Mrs. Norris. Well, everybody insults Mrs. Norris. I, I, I. Been framed by Peeves for pelting bits of chalk at people. No, it wouldn't be framed by Peeves, because Peeves would proudly, proudly announce that he was the one that threw those chalk at people. It wouldn't be that. Tried to force their way through a door to an out-of-bounds corridor. And that is definitely it, because they had no idea they were in the wrong spot, because everything keeps moving. Even like Harry saying, he's sure that the suits of armor can get around and walk around. So, yeah, we're going to go with that one. Yes. All right. All right. All right. What result did Hermione Granger receive, achieve in her first year charms exam? 100%? Hermione only getting 100%? I'm sure there's extra credit somewhere. 
99%, she would throw herself off the astronomy tower. Like, don't, don't. 112% or 101%. Now, let's see. Uh, that was brought up in the, like, trials to get the stone, right? And they're like, well, what are you doing? They're going to get you kicked out. And she's like, not if I have anything to say about it. Professor Flitwick told me in private that I got 112% on my charms exam. See? I, I got it right. Whew! I, I, I'm waiting. I'm waiting to get this wrong. This just... It must be that I finished the book today. It has to be. Select all that apply. Which characters are mentioned in the first chapter by name? Sirius Black, definitely, because Hagrid borrowed the bike from young Sirius Black, and he has to get it back to her. Mrs. Fig is mentioned in the second chapter, I believe, because she broke her leg and could not uh, sit him for the zoo. Madame Pomfrey, yes, definitely Madame Pomfrey, because um, when McGonagall is and uh, Dumbledore are talking about Voldemort, and she, he was like, I have power, Voldemort has powers I could never have. And McGonagall is just like, only because you're too noble to use them. And he's just, oh, it's lucky it's dark. I haven't blushed so much since Madame Pomfrey complimented my new earmuffs. Yes. And Deedless Diggle, I believe that was uh, when they were talking about shooting stars on the local news. And McGonagall was like, Shooting stars down in Kent. That must be Deedless Diggle. He never had any sense. And poor Dumbledore is just like, oh, let him be. We've had precious little to celebrate all these years. It, ah! Oh my god, I cannot believe I'm doing this well. There has to be some kind of thing here. It just doesn't make sense. Who were Harry and Draco's seconds for their intended wizard's duel? All right, this wasn't in the movie. Hermione and Crab. Actually, Hermione probably would have been a fantastic second. No offense to Ron, but she probably would have been better at Ro than Ron. No no offense. No offense. But it, of course it has to be Ron, because Ron is his buddy. It's his, He's obviously his number two. Neville and Goyle? Okay, that one sounds incredible. I almost want to see that duel, don't you? Neville and Goyle? Oh my god, that, that just seems like a fun duel. Ron and Goyle or Ron and Crab? Well, I think I've always thought Crab was the more dangerous of Crab and Goyle. He wasn't as big, but, you know, you learn in the seventh one that he's a lot more nastier. I mean, doesn't he cast that uh, evil fire? So, Ron and Crab. Oh, I cannot believe this is going so well. Select all, all that apply. Which of these events happen in Harry's dreams on his first night at Hogwarts? The boa constrictor talks to Harry. Well, that's not, that's not in the, that's, that's in the reptile room. Uh, he sees a flying motorbike. N no, that was a dream he had on the way to the zoo. A burst of green light appears. Well, I'm going to click on that because a burst of green light always appears in his dreams in the beginning of this. Quirrell's turban talks to him. Yes, but I think that was somehow the Horcrux and Harry talking to, uh, like, resonating with uh, Voldemort's soul at Quirrell. I think it was just... They're resonating together because the tur turban was telling him that there had been a mistake and he must go ask to be transferred to Slytherin at once. And Harry's like, I don't want to become and go to Slytherin. So, yeah, I, I, I totally think that's what happened there. And Draco Malfoy turns into Snape, which also happens. Again, I'm correct. All right. What does Professor Snape say he would add, get if he added powdered root of asphodel to an infusion of wormwood? I mean, it was something like uh, and a, 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 a concoction so powerful, it's known as the draught of living death. Let's go with that. That just sounds more correct. It's just, oh, thank, I, I, was, I, was, I was worried it was the draught of peace. I was worried it was the draught of peace. Okay. Okay. Next. Last question. Oh, there is no way. Am I actually going to get this 100% right? That just doesn't seem possible. Select all that apply. Which of the following are chapter titles in Philosopher's Stone? Uh, the Midnight Duel, because we already discussed this. A Peck of Owls is, I don't think, is in this one. I think that was in, uh, isn't a Peck of Owls in either the beginning of the third one when he's getting a bunch of owls, or is that after he comes home 
from the Dementor attack at five, and all the owls are coming to cause a problem that pissing everyone off. So, no. Man with two faces. Um, damn. Aboard the Hogwarts Express. Well, the uh, chapter of when they get on the Hogwarts Express on the first time is like platform nine and three quarters. And then it goes straight into the sorting. But I don't know if the last chapter is aboard the Hogwarts Express. You, you notice the chapter titles a lot more vividly when you're reading the books rather than listening to it. Um, <sighs> aboard the Hogwarts Express. I don't think so. And I don't think Alpost is either. I'm going to take the risk. I think it's only these two. No way. No way I did it? Holy crap! I did not expect that. I got a hundred percent. You're in the philosopher's zone. <laughs> you scored 20 out of 20. <clears throat> Result, you're in the philosopher's stone zone. You have clearly read this book once or twice or a million. <laughs> Your nerve, courage, and logic saw you conquer this quiz. In fact, you, philosopher owned it. <laughs> philosophers owned it. Okay, I know that was a horrible pun. But I love puns. Oh, that was so great. All right. So I'm going to... Oh, wow. I, I cannot believe I actually did that. That was awesome. That was awesome. I'm really pleased. Um, it, 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 I apologize for the clicking here. Um, I, I screen captured it while I was on camera, and I didn't know if my computer would actually let me do that. So, uh, holy crap! That was great! Oh, I, 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 I'm, I'm really surprised. I really am. That was awesome. That was awesome. That was not something ISIS expected at all. Uh, I didn't expect to get 20 out of 20. So, yes! Uh, <laughs> way too excited for a quiz about a children's book. But I've loved this book ever since I was young, you know. I, I think I first read this book in like fourth, fifth grade. So around between 10 and 12. It's sad I can't remember. Uh, but then I read the last book as a senior in high school at the age of 17. So like, I just, I just feel like I have a special connection with the series, which a lot of people do. And I bet there's, oh, a whole bunch of people who are in the same boat as me, that they've just read the series growing up. They grew up along with these other characters and they see them almost as too real so uh, thank you so much for watching uh, if you enjoyed it please like possibly subscribe uh, if there's anything else you want me to do react to quizzes you want me to take anything like this put it in the comments below and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day uh, take care peace out